welcome everybody and thank you for joining me today. Um, you are joining me, Hannah. <laughs> uh, this is Hannah's Happy Space. Uh, welcome, like I say, everybody is, everybody and anybody is absolutely welcome here. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you are returning to the channel, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for your continued support. If you are new, uh, welcome. How many times can I say welcome at the beginning of a podcast? Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy what you see. Hopefully, if you do, you might give the video a like, even subscribe if you feel you'd like to do that also. Like I say, my name is Hannah. For those of you who have not met me before, you are joining me here today at home. Um, home is uh, in Devon. Lots of errs this morning. Sorry, I'm not really that prepared for a podcast. Car has gone out this morning. It's the beginning of the half term. Everybody's out, so I thought, quick, gather everything together and film because I haven't done one for a little while. So excuse the errs. Where was I? Uh, uh, home, home. Devon um, is where I live in southwest of England, on little town on the edge of Dartmoor. I live at home with Cara, who I've just mentioned, who is my sister and her son Sebi. Um, my nephew who is 10 he is not here at the moment it is the beginning of the easter holidays and he has gone to spend the first week of it in cornwall with his dad uh he has lots of golf competitions to play this week so he'll be quite worn out when he gets home i'd imagine uh what anything else what else can i tell you shall i be very british and tell you what the weather is okay Currently, looking out the window, it is quite bright out there. It is not raining at the moment. I'm sure that will change. It was horrible yesterday, pouring down, and I never know whether it will come out on the camera. It's not raining now, but our conservatory is just there. And if it rains, it and it if it rains like it has been, it's so noisy. And sometimes, it even you can start hearing it to tinkle down the chimney. <laughs> So hopefully we won't be interrupted by any noisy rain. Um, we even had snow the other day. When was that? Wednesday night. Really quite heavy snow. It was only for about an hour, but there was panic because um, our Nick group meets on Thursday morning and it was, we thought, uh-oh, we're going to be snowed in. We weren't. We weren't. It was fine. We all made it. And actually, um, it was the busiest Nick club it's ever been because... Thursday, the Thursday that's just been was the Thursday before the Easter weekend. Um, the schools in the local area had an inset day, so the kids were off. So we had Sebi there, Ruth had her daughter there. There was extras. Um, I think there was one of us missing. So yeah, we had to have extra, no, two missing. Extra tables squished together. Um, oh, and also my brother was there, Finley. He has just been to visit for the week. Um, for, home from university for a week <sighs> what else have we been up to had a visit from um, my other I had three brothers um, I had another visit from Dominic who is the eldest of my three younger brothers him and his girlfriend came to visit for the day on Friday I'm losing track already um, yep yeah, so we had a household on Friday so there would be me Cara Sebi Dominic and his girlfriend Charlotte and my other two brothers Finley and Harry we liked board game Finley had some new board games he doesn't travel without his board games he came on the train from Cardiff with one of those great big you know with his all his clothes but also um a great big one of those you know bag for life shopping bags filled with board games so we've had fun playing those um anything else like I say, it's the holidays now, so we've got a quiet week this week without Sebi. I think there's some household chores and cleaning to be done. Um, and then Sebi will be back and we can do a bit more fun things. <laughs> um, okay, so what are we today? We are, I'm losing track of the days because of, we don't have to get up for the school runs and things. It really throws me out. Um, Tuesday. Tuesday, yes, it's Tuesday the 2nd of April. Yes. So anyway, let's, let's move on from all that. Um, you know what the day is, you know what the weather's like now. Now we can get on with the good stuff. We can get on with the crafting, what you're probably here for, I'd imagine. Um, I'm just gathering up my 
project cards so I've got some idea of what I'm going to show you. Right, shall we start with what I am wearing? Ta-da! You have seen this before um, briefly a couple of episodes ago I think, definitely wasn't in the last one. Um, this is my Totally Toastals jumper, move my hair so you can see them, Totally Toastals jumper from Sam Sabido. This is a crocheted jumper. Let me get my card. Yeah, totally. Blah, 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 blah. Crochet jumper. <laughs> Sorry. Crochet jumper. And I have crocheted mine using majority. This blue colour is um, a Yarnsmith's Create Double Knit, which is 100% um, acrylic. It's a double knit, like I say, and the colourway is Deep Ocean. Now, when I showed you this last, I was hadn't done the sleeves, definitely. I finished, finished the yoke and I was sort of halfway down the body. Now, I am a larger lady, so I did one of the larger sizes. But when it came to, um, after I'd spoken to you, I thought, oh, I'm going to get back on with that. I thought, I'll try it on, just double check. And to be honest, it was huge. Um, yeah, really, if I'd have carried on, it would have been very big. Um, so I'm just looking at my notes. If I made, I know I put that I changed. What I did is I ripped back, because you do all the increasing in the yoke. So I ripped back until the, the sweater was big enough across the top. So, because you split for the sleeves here. So I ripped back to about here. So I knew that I'd have enough stitches left to do the arms, but that was going to be big enough around because I didn't, use the actual stitch count in the pattern where I'm getting to um for the body I'm trying to think I'm not sure the, the pattern has lots of different sizing yes and it suggests a four millimeter crochet hook which is generally what I'd use for a double knit anyway um unless I was doing algorithm but I don't think there was a gauge on there I'm not sure so I'd say if you're and I think I'm fairly standard with my gauge um nothing too outrageous i don't normally have to change hook sizes to what's in the pattern um so if you are, were planning on making this jumper i'd say just keep trying it on which is easy enough to do because sorry sort of trousers um like it's a top down so just keep trying it on see where you get to right what was i gonna say <laughs> the toe stools these are all um Done separate squares so this kind of the fun bit isn't it and then that's why I think I'd got put off by the rest of it because it was just round and round and round in blue but by the time I'd bit the bullet ripped out much to Cara's disgust um gone down stitch sizes all that it works up really quickly um what was I looking at what other colors I'd use so I used other colors from stash for the toe stools they are a variety they're mainly Starcraft special double knit these are the little tags obviously you can see them here um the bright pink is a shipyard's color crafter in hilversum i think maybe is how you say it that's the pink one the rest are starcraft special they are i thought this was jaffa but i think it might be spikes actually now looking at it it's orange <laughs> um, this is definitely citron lime and magenta and cream for the spots and the um what are these stalks so these are my if you haven't seen these before these are my project cards that i fill out whilst completing projects these are from fran over at fran and do makes they are free from her website i'll i'll leave the link down below anything i talk about there'll be links or information down in the description box below but they're really good because um i've tried in the past to keep records of everything that i've made over a year and i've never succeeded but these um just have on them the information they need that i need anyway um and i've managed to keep up to up with them and i keep them all the completed ones in one of these little plasticky pockets so um yeah i'm keeping on top of these and whoop, it oh dear things are things are falling where did that go sorry about this 
<laughs> I've got all my projects and bits next to me and they're all tumbling around. Um, what was I saying? Yes. The bit I like most is seeing how long things have taken me to do. So I cast this jump on on the 23rd of January and finished on the 14th of March. It would have been done a lot quicker, but like I say, there was that break in the middle where I got bored and did other things. Um, yeah, so this is it complete. What I will do is pop a picture in now so that you can see the full things. So that is Here's my first finished item. Pop that over there. Just give my teas food enough to drink instead of scalding my mouth on the podcast. Let's have a look. Wish me luck. Oh, that's okay. I've got um don't think you'll be able to I don't want to tip it because it'll come fall out, but it's all it's a purple tea, it's um blue raspberry tea from Bird and Blend, which starts off blue and then you put lemon juice in it, turns like a ready purpley colour, matching the theme of my jumper. We've become slightly obsessed with Bird and Blend teas in this house. We've used to, we've always liked them, but Cara has a subscription where you get three different ones every month. And um, yeah, we've got a large collection now. Anyway, let's carry on, shall we? Where are my notes? There they are. Right, the next item I have finished is my um, Felix pullover that I showed you last week. I haven't actually got it to show you because it's probably upstairs in one of Cara's drawers. This was a job for Cara. Felix pullover, I'm sure you've heard of it, is from Savory Knitting, who is Amy Christoffers. It's a worsted Aran weight jumper that down the um, raglan has the arrowhead... Um, eyelets so i was using for cara's jumper this one which is yarn smiths again free spirit aaron this one doesn't have a name on but I, where have i I've written it down somewhere painted lady and that's a little sample that hasn't got all the greens and things in but what i'll do is i'll put a picture of that in now So, yeah, I showed you that last time. That is now a finished item. Not much else to say on that one. Um, very quick knit because it's Aaron knits up really quickly um, and it's a top down jumper. Uh, and it's cropped as well, so that's even less time knitting too. I've just seen here yeah, they don't put, oh, a shade 1D009. I don't, why don't yarn companies put the names? not all of them, of yarns, if they've got names, on their labels. Because on the website, this is listed as Painted Lady. Here it is 1D009. What? Just put, just put it on the label. Come on. Um, yarn Smiths, if you haven't used, heard or used of before, is an exclusive yarn to Wool Warehouse. I've used it quite a few times. Have, haven't had any problems with it. Um, I knitted Harry a flax sweater for Christmas in the same brand in a different colour like this is um their DK have I used any of their others don't think so I've got my eye on their pebble which is a similar sort of yarn looking at it to Shepley Stones okay that's Cara's jumper if I keep looking down my notes are on the tape the chair underneath you that's why um Okay, what else did I want to show you? Finished items. I had a little burst of small items. I think because I'd been working on sweaters, like this one, Cara's. Um, I have got another one, but I'm not going to show you that today. Oh, you know, you get, I don't know if you get like this when you think you're enjoying the process. It's all very nice, but it is quite nice to have a finished item. So I started looking for smaller things to do. Um, and also if you're watching this podcast you probably watch other podcasts and they're lethal for influencing you to <laughs> start new things when maybe you shouldn't be so i shall show you which one shall i show you let's show you this crocheted rub and find the yarn okay so 
I've already mentioned her today, Fran, lovely Fran from Franny Do Make. So I was watching her the other day and she had made an absolutely beautiful shawl, um, crocheted shawl, one skein project. And it was called the Moonlight Shawl um, by Sandra Paul, who is Sandra Cherry Heart. Is that? I'll link it. Um, it's a one skein shawl, like I say, crocheted. Now, the one that Fran had made, really lovely, um, but she'd run out of her main colour yarn, which is a one skein pattern. Um, so she'd used um, pink as a little out for the last sort of couple of, maybe one or two rows um, as an extra complementary colour. And although that was not the intended for the pattern, I thought it looked lovely. So I did it on purpose with mine. I have used Beehive Yarns um, in the colourway Double Trouble. And this was a, was a set with a 100 gram skein, that one, of pinks and oranges and greens, purples. It's tiny bits of yellow, and um, that was 100 grams, and that's had a neon green mini, a uh, 20 gram mini with that one. So I knew that I was going to use a contrasting colour. Um, I would have been able to have done the whole shawl in that main colour because um, the main colour was 100 grams, yes, but it was a slightly longer skein, so it's 425 metres. Um, so I definitely would have got it out of the whole thing the makeup of the, that particular yarn is 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon let me show you i'll do go across it's quite long for a um a one skein it hasn't been blocked and i think i'm gonna block it just because of this oops this bit here to make that this will come up so it is a paid for pattern um you do the bulk of the shawl um, from from one tip to the other, then you come back round and put on this edging. Now let me see if I can. Yeah, it definitely needs blocking, so you can see a bit better. So I have used the green mini to do this final um, sort of pointed scallop edge. If I block it as well, that will make the points come out a bit bit better. So, um, obviously, whoop, looking great with this outfit. <laughs> Not that I'm normally that bothered about what shawls I wear with outfits. Um, here we go. Just a nice little one skein shawl. Bit of blocking might add a little bit of length. Not that it particularly needs it. Really lovely. Um, really nice those like one skeins that you've got knocking around that you don't really know what to do with or you think maybe shouldn't be hidden on your feet <laughs> um yeah really really nice i really enjoyed it super quick i think it only took me yeah two days no three days 22nd to the 23rd yeah about three, <laughs> about three days um i am quite a speedy crocheter but yeah really lovely really like that one i think i will have to do another one um like i say they don't have to have this contrast edging but that's that one and i'll give it a bit of a block what i must do at some point i am on instagram um for those of you who are on instagram i haven't been very active recently for some reason Apart from sharing shop updates and things, I, what I must do is go through, take some photos of all these finished objects that I've been showing you guys here and put them on Instagram. Um, I'm going to put that up there so I remember that it needs blocking. Slap T. Yeah. What next? So I finished that one and then I thought, did I do that one first? No, actually, I didn't. I did it afterwards. Oh, I must have finished that, the one I'm about to show you. I thought, I'll do another one and then do the shawl. Um, why did I put this? Is Anyway, sorry, just jabbering on to myself. 
Um, another one skein shawl. This is knitted this time. It's going to be a bit difficult to show you because again, it's not blocked. That is, it's blocking will be this week. Why did I think I've had this pattern in my library on Ravelry for a while? It's a free pattern. Um, oh, I know why. I saw Jackie making or a finished one on, on Jackie's Instagram. Jackie Verbeek is the designer. I've made one of her shawls before I was looking to see if I could see it and I can't see it over there um which was another one skin shawl the memento shawl I showed you a couple of podcasts ago maybe which was a lilac knitted one skin shawl this is called the crinkle cut and I have used yarn from the discreet unicorn lovely Miriam over there one of my favorite dyers um and this is a 100% merino zebra yarn so that's the colours and the colourway is chasing rainbows and this is what I have left these two little balls which may become um tassels or pom-poms or something for the ends it's gonna like I say it's gonna be tricky to show you um because you see it's quite curly so again, this is a one skein shawl that's knitted from point to point. Now that looks really like it's super skinny. Try. So it's all curled up on itself, which is the nature of the, the scarf, it says anyway, but you, I do need to block it. It will curl slightly on the ends as you wear it. Let me try and pull it out a bit on the wider bit there we go if I put my hand behind it we can see what we're looking at so it's like I say it's free pattern it's um stocking and garter now you would have seen there that I showed two little balls what you do for this pattern is you split the yarn into two different weight balls although it's free pattern I'm not going to obviously tell you everything um and the stocking stitch is knitted on one size needle then you add your second strand of yarn and change to a needle to make these whoop, garter ridges so that gives you your crinkle look um, and you increase to a certain point and then you start decreasing now I could put it on but as you can see it doesn't really look like much at the moment because um, It's all curled up on itself. But once it's been blocked, there'll be a bit more to it, a bit more width. So what I might do is pin this out and block it. And then um, I will take a photograph of it, but maybe just because you can't see it that well here. Um, I'll show you next time as well, just to show you what the blocking's done to it. But another little springy, um, springy boing but spring weather um one skein shawl and this was a really nice easy project total television knitting um trying to think of it about six six row blah, 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 six row repeat i think yeah really lovely and the yarn is super super soft i love this zebra yarn um oh so yeah, finished, but not 100% finished because it could do with a jolly good block. So that can go in this pile over here, the blocking pile. Um, so that is that one. Another one skein shawl. Move those little balls of wool before they roll, where they go, before they roll away and disappear inside the sofa. <coughs> right, what else have we got? That is a... Those are the two whips. Right, what else have we got? We have got another knit project. Here it is. Buried. So, this, well, what I'm going to show you next is the Musselburgh hat. Now, I'm sure every single one of you has heard of the Musselburgh hat, and probably majority of you have made a Musselburgh hat. I have been putting it off and off and off and off, because um, A, it starts with a pinhole cast on. I don't know how to do that. B, um, 
I knit circular, yes, but I've never knit something so small circular that you'd have to use magic loop. I don't know how to do that. Um, and I don't really know how to use um, DPNs properly. Um, and I'm still not sure I do because I just did it myself <laughs> when it comes to it. So muscle bra hat, the reason I started a muscle bra hat was because um, I follow Alex over at my yarn corner. Lovely Alex has a Facebook page and her and a friend were making a muscle bra hat together and had sort of an informal make along over on the Facebook page. So I thought, right, let's go for it. Skein up, uh, ball up a skein of yarn, try it out. If you can't manage it, you can't manage it and use it all for something else, not a problem. Um, and that's what I did. Pinhole cast on or circular cast on, it gives a couple of different options, I think. And I just thought, I'm not, I don't know how to do those. I can look them up, yes, and I, but I, is it going to put me off? Blah, blah, blah. And then I remembered Alex saying, she's made muscle bras before. She just uses a long tail cast on um, and uses the end that you're left with to sew up the, sew up the hole. So that's what I did. I think that looks okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I did for that. So now you've seen the yarn, let me tell you what we've got. So the muscle bra hat, if you don't know, um, is by Your Solder Teague. Um, and you knit this weird thing. This sort of long tubey thing. Um, now I've got to try and... And then you fold the inside back into that. You fold this end into the other end. Um, to make hat, which I will try and do in a second. Yarn. I have used a skein of yarn that has been in stash for ages, so that was good that I managed to get one out of stash. This is a yarn by Siobhan's Craft, four ply yarn. It's 85% superwash pole wash and 15% nylon, and the colourway is Solstice. That's Siobhan's. Um, yarn label words today you've just oh so i've knit mine on a three millimeter needles and i did the large size yes i i'm finally admit it, i have got quite a large head but also i have a huge amount of hair at the moment it doesn't look a huge amount of hair because it's all straightened it's a huge amount of hair so um to work out the sizes, again, this is a painful pattern, so I'm not going to tell you too much. To work out the size of your hat that you need, measure your head, obviously. Um, and then it's all broken down into sizes and dependent on your gauge, depends on how many stitches, etc, etc. So I was watching Alex actually yesterday on her podcast, and I think she was right in the way she was talking about muscle wear hats, that yes, the rest of the... the um, pattern is very good but like socks you need a recipe for your own head um and to work on gauge and where you like hats to fit all that kind of thing so i just followed the pattern um and i used nearly the entire skein of this i had a gram left because i'd seen who was it who was knitting one denise from dear designs and she was had done the increase bit weighed how much that had taken and then saved that bit for the decrease and so just knit all the rest so i thought well i'll do that to use up all the yarn um again this is another one for the blocking pile because really it could do with a little bit more length i think if i want to turn it up have a brim on it i'm going to try and put it back together what i was going to show you actually is obviously if you've used variegated yarn before or stripe, striping yarn, you'll know that the pattern will change depending on the stitch count. So this one isn't, I mean, it isn't a striping yarn, but you can definitely see sort of a colour repeat through it. So obviously it's different here on the crown on the increase. Then you work down the body and weirdly, so you was working down the body here. And then can you see here how it started to pull? But nothing had changed by that point. The stitch count hadn't changed so i guess that's just the nature of hand dyed yarns um so i prefer this bit so that bit's going 
the pooly bit is going inside so just try and line that up I think I'll definitely be making another one of these because I think Dominic my brother would like one he likes that sort of style hat um oh it's a bit big so that is the hat I will try and put it on and not um look like an absolute donut so yeah that is it's a fairly good fit I think fits all my hair in um <laughs> now the pattern also you know you can do this turned up brim I think with the length that I've got this doesn't look too good um I mean I could have a smaller brim I guess but again I think oh obviously not like that but <laughs> this is slightly better at the moment um so I'm in two minds whether to block it to try and do the turn so it's got a bit more for the brim I don't know I'm quite happy with it is as it god I can't talk today as it is at the moment Brrr. oh dear never mind so a muscle bra hat finally um is your podcast complete until you have made a muscle bra hat I don't know um my first muscle bra hat I definitely will be doing another not in a huge rush because knitting with four pins is not my preferred style I may have to look into magic loop before I make another one of those so that can go on the blocking pile as a reserve excuse me there's a very noisy pigeon sat on my roof and I can hear it coming down the chimney however he's not as noisy as the rooster the next door neighbours no no he doesn't know how to tell time um sometimes it's been known to go off at midnight when the security light over the other neighbor's house goes off he obviously feels that it's sunrise and it's time for him to do his job as you can tell i'm quite keen on him <laughs> right okay one more finished object before i get onto the whips what are we doing for time half an hour let's get a wriggle on because i've got some shop update bits at the end to show you as well if you're interested last one was a crochet project really fancied a little bit of crochet um did I do this after the crochet no this was before the crochet scarf I wanted a quick crochet project that would um crochet up quickly so I could see something finished um quickly said that a lot of times and this was quick I did it in a day <laughs> did have a bit of a sore hand afterwards and I was up till gone midnight so this next pattern is from this lovely book the animal friends of Peter Pau 2 by Jan Schenkel I have all three of these books I have made many of the characters from them want to make more and I have chosen let me move the pattern so it can't be seen this is Ada the lamb um yeah I thought a nice springtime eastery project pop up on the mantelpiece and this after raided and stash what I really wanted to do is knit is crochet the lovely chicken from the new from the book three but I didn't have the yarn that I needed for that one so here is my little lammy very sweet um her coat's a little bit big but we can live with that this is my version of Ada the lamb she's a little bit wobbly on her legs that's it does it do twirl um so what can I tell you about Ada the um the pattern books tend to call for cotton for these I didn't have the right amounts and all that for this so I have used things from stash that didn't have labels I think this might be a drops, maybe a charisma, something like that. It's quite woolly. It's a double knit and it's quite woolly. Um, so that's for the main body. That's cream coloured. Um, and then everything else I have used, again, is, is um, from my acrylic stash. So the little coat does come off. I'm not going to take it off because it's a fiddle to get it back on. A little tail. Um, yeah, I don't know what what 
how much to tell you what I can tell you about this obviously it's a book from a book so I can't tell you a huge amount um head is done separately ears are separately sewn on and then all of the body is made as one piece you make all your legs and pick up and no you don't you make your body and then you separate for the legs um so that's the actual little lamb I've gone for some little eyelashes and all that malarkey but her coat as you can see from the picture I don't know if there's there are more pictures but I think that one shows the best uh, is has this little collar they've done a stripy collar on theirs I didn't want to faff around with the colour changing so what I've used is this I don't know if you can see it in this light the pale blue has a bit of a sparkly thread running through might be able to see it a little bit um, so I used that for the mane and then this lilac-y colour for the collar frilly collar then I decided to make it even more springy and have used the same pinky colour, lilac-y colour to embroider some flowers on, those are lazy daisies um, and then some yellow to make the French knots in the centres and we can see some uh, workings there, not that neat inside but who's peeping in there. So that is my little lamb, Ada Lamb, she's going back up on the mantelpiece after this. So that is the last finished objects pop that over there okay yeah so that's it for finished objects let's move on to works in progress i have one two three to show you i'm working on a couple of others but i picked out three to show you first one in this bag so one of my bags this is the hitchhiker shawl i've showed this couple of podcasts ago back when it was not a lot to show so the Hitchhiker Shore by Martina Bem I think I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it sorry if it isn't I am using a Shoppel's album ball which is a 75% virgin ball 75% virgin wool, 25% polymide and I'm using the colour Indish Rosa this is the tag in Shoppel's album ball um I still have a fair amount left. Oh, that's blown out a bit, it's not quite so red. This is all pinks, purples, and reds. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. It's been, been out for a long time. Um, but again, another single skein scarf shawl. Um let's get the front. So last time I showed you, I think I've had just this little sort of end. I now now have that's still been quite dark there but it's a bit brighter um up to here so you keep going until you have 42 points so i have two four six, 12 14 16 18 19 20 21 Talking when she sells for a minute, 27, 29, 30, 32, 34. I am on the 36th repeat, so not a huge amount to go, but the rows, as you can see, are getting quite long now. My little froggy stoppers on there. This has become my knit club knitting, it's quite an easy pattern to remember. Although I do have it written down on a little piece of paper that's looking very scruffy at the moment in my bag. So she says I've lost, oh there it is, Whew. get my scrappy bit of paper back in there. This, I don't know, might be finished by the time I see you next, depends if I choose to work on it other than at Knit Club and how much I actually work on it at Knit Club because things like coffee and cake and chatting get in the way. So that's that one. Um, next one is the MTR. This is what I've shown you before as well. Let me gather everything together. So this is my. Don't have. You can see that. 
get the card out. No, I think because right this is a monthly club that i have been getting from suzanne at green lambkin yarns this is the secret treasure box monthly club i have the um the sparkle base is a double knit um yarn that you get which is a 75 percent merino 20% nylon, 5% Stellina, and you get five 20 gram minis. No, you don't, you get four 20 gram minis. So I'm using with my yarn the Large Sunburst Granny Square pattern by Nautical Crochet. And I showed you, I'm not sure when, but I have shown you this stack of circles. The sparkle's not really showing up because the light's not good enough. So this was January's. So I'm getting two of these circles from each 20 gram mini. And then what I plan to do is square them off with a grey, join them all together that way. Um, but that's going to be once i've made them all up that'll be the joining afterwards so that was last month that was no that was january sorry then i have done february so i've just kept the little ends to go on the cards so let me show you these ones so first off is this color oops Need that one with two of each then blue and purple two of those this is my favorite one next little pastels spring colors two of those and finally whoops dropped one on the floor excuse me yellows so there's no um theme as in like following the color um order or anything they are little treasures something different every month that is february's colors so they will be tucked away and i had an email yesterday to say that the next month we are on their way what am i looking for i don't know <laughs> that is those finally this pattern I am knitting a cardigan for my mum, mum's cardigan as it says on here, um, started this a couple of days ago, she bought all the wool, she bought the pattern, she began the knitting, um, let me show you what it is, it is a Starcraft Recreate pattern, pattern 01157 and it is this cardigan here, there is a longer version but mum's having this short version um as you can see it's a striped cardigan with eyelets cropped not that complicated mum <laughs> um, but first off mum started it she couldn't bother with the eyelets too complicated she'd have to concentrate i know she's watching this um and i'm not sorry uh and then she done i think five row five stripes and decided purling was not for her she only likes knitting now i don't know if she did it on purpose but i said fine I, if you like i'll knit it for you so that is what's happening um so and it's in pieces which i'm not i haven't decided well it's in pieces till you get to the top then you join at the at the yoke so her colors are slightly different to the pattern so we've got a back and we have got two fronts very pearly one and two and a cast on a sleeve 
first sleeve last night, so we've only got the, the cuff and the first stripe. Um, yep, all going quite well. It's quite funny going back to these sort of commercial patterns. They're written quite differently to sort of indie patterns. Um, but everything's going well. I had a ball bag. This cardigan is being knit in the Recreate, which I have used before. I've knit a Tolster in it. I really like it. It's quite a fine double knit. It's 100% recycled yarn. Um, so it's 40% recycled wool. Hold on. 40% wool from recycled garments, 30% acrylic, also from garments that have been recycled, and 30% polyester that comes from plastic bottles. So that's what we're using. Um, if I show you, it's all in this basket. I'll show you the yellow, which is coming on really. Um, you might be able to see it's got these flecks of different colours in from the recycled yarns. But yeah, really lovely. Knitting up nicely. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully. So that is that one. I am speeding along a little bit because we're getting on and I want to um, do a little shop update at the end of this. So double checking as always everything has been shown slurp of tea because I'm a bit in a sort of dry throat jabbering oh it's gone a little bit cold <laughs> not so bad because it's fruit tea so it's a bit more like juice but wasn't what I was expecting um right so that is everything that I've been working on or still working on at the moment Yes, double checking. Are there, like I say, there are other things. Sorry, getting close. I'm just stretching to have a look in my book. Um, keeps slipping. Um, yes, let me move that out of the way. That's everything I wanted to show you this week. It's time. Um, hopefully, I'll be back a little bit sooner than last time. I am going to show you what went into the last shop update because uh, I didn't get a chance to show you on a video before. I wanted to just get them in the shop because it was taking a while. Um, but I am going to go through them now. If that's not your um, kind of thing, absolutely fine. Thank you very much for joining me. If you are sticking around, brilliant. Um, my shop is on Ko-fi. There is a link in the bottom. You can support the channel with Ko-fi donations. Absolutely no pressure at all. Um, if you want to, though, <laughs> that was really kind. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that's where the shop is listed. So I'm going to show you that now. What I need to do first, though is take out the two bags that I'm not going to show you because they've been sold and are going in the post shortly. Right, okay. I will start with these larger bags. One, two. Sorry, I'm not very organised with this bit, am I? So, and I'm not even in the camera. Right, these are the larger bags. These are um, about 11, 11, I think 11 inches by 12 inches, something like that. I haven't got my notebook here to tell you the exact measurements. Everything is detailed on the, co on the shop listings, though. So have a look on there if you want more information. Like I said, these are the large bags. These are drawstring bags with handles. The drawstrings you will notice are different this time. I'm using natural cotton cord for the drawstrings that have just been knotted on the ends. Um, unlike in my bag here, I was using this um, paracord with the plastic clips. I have plenty of this cord left, but getting hold of these plastic clips has, became, has become quite hard. I can't get them even in the UK, so... I don't really, if I don't have to, want to have to get them shipped over from wherever. Um, I'd much rather buy locally and use this cotton cord, which I think a lot of bag makers do. If that isn't your preference and you would prefer those plastic clips, just let me know and I'll see how many people want them back and I'll try and get hold of them again. But everything I show you today will come with these cotton cords. Right. That's the jargon. Right, here we go. Large bags. This is um, 
drip fabric, brightly coloured drip fabric, black top, handles, yellow lining and my bags now have Hannah's Happy Space stamped inside them. So that's the first large bag. Then we have painted petals. This one has a pink lining. Then we have this um, embroidered flowers look. They're printed, they're not embroidered, they're printed um, with yellow top and purple lining. Again, there's photos of everything on the website in more detail. Then the last large bag is this crocheted square, uh, crochet flower squares with the blue top and yellow lining. So that is the larger bags that are left. Then my smaller bags, there are quite a lot of. So we have the same prints that I've just shown you, but in smaller. These ones are about nine by 10 inches. So we have the smaller bags. Um, these ones are just right for one skein projects like socks, one skein shawls, amigurumi. Again, they have my name stamped inside now. So we have the drip bag. Embroidered flowers with the pink top and navy blue lining. That last one had yellow lining actually, I should have said. Painted petals again oop, with pink top and this one has lime green lining. So that's the same. Oh no, there it is. What was another one? And um crocheted flower squares, I don't know why I'm just, forget that one, with the green top and bright blue lining. All my bags are lined, they are not, um, they don't have any wadding in, so they're sort of floppier bags if you like. Next we have this one which is Pink Jungle crocodiles and monkeys, toucans, tigers, then this animal print at the top and oh, dark green lining. So again, these are all the smaller size. Then we have this bright green floral with uh, purple with stars on and this one's got a white lining. Another jungle print, this one's a toucans with this corally pink top and dark green lining. And one more jungly print. This is crocodiles with the orange animal print top and white lining. Oop, there's crocodiles. Then we have like this. This is mice with their cakes. Then this pale pink geometric print at the top and cream lining. Then we have the riverbank, which is otters and ducks and kingfishers and birds and things with this ditzy floral and another white lining. Then finally, oh, I know what happened. Um, three little pigs with red spotty top and blue spotty lining. So that's all the small bags. I'm just going to pause you one second. Sorry about that. I just needed to grab. One of the bags I'm using as my own project bag. <laughs> so you've seen this one before. These are so these are larger bags that are available as pre-orders on my um, shop. It's all explained on there. Um, I will go through it now though. So these are larger bags. These 
Thanks for opening this book. I worked these out to be about 13. Here's a loose thread there. 13 by about 15 um, inches. So this is the embroidered rainbow and flowers printed, not embroidered. Um, so this is available for pre-order on the website, on the shop. It does explain that there are options. Um, so you'll get this print, this is the main panel. You will then have the choice of what colour spots you have at the top, what colour spots you have at the back. This will come with a cream lining, no matter what, and it will not come with these cords like I explained before, it will come with the cotton cords. So you have a choice of blue, so all with the white polka dots, blue, pink, yellow or purple, I think is what I put on the listing. It is there. Um, if you choose this this bag and you want and you don't want the bl all blue, message me. You can message through Kofi. If that doesn't work, message me on Instagram. If that doesn't work, leave a comment on the uh, this video and I will get in touch some other way. Um, if you don't put in any message, you will receive the blue. Okay, so hopefully that will make sense. So the pre-order choices are this one with the spots and the cream lining or the sheep. So this is the woolly sheep, rainbow sheep. So you will get the bag, same size as that one. The, the bag will come with this main picture. This one has a green top and a blue back. If you don't send me a message, you will receive a bag with this panel, green top, blue back and cream lining. This bag will also only have cream lining. However, if you don't like these colours, there is a choice. You can message me um, and the choices are blue, green, yellow and pink. And you can choose, diff that it could be all the same, top and back, it can be different. Message me, let me know. Again, if you don't, you'll get what the same as this one. Pre-orders, I have put on there that they will take at least two to three weeks to be dispatched. OK, because I have to order in the fabrics, then make them, then get them out to you. That is why they are on a pre-order, because I didn't know what the interest would be in these amount of panels. Um, I have limited the number just because you have to put in a quantity. Um, I have just put in up to the number for the sheep because the sheep have all gone or had gone. Um, so I've upped that so you can still pre-order them. The pre-orders will only be open until Friday, this Friday. So that is the so we're the second today, third, fourth. So the fifth of April was the last chance to pre-order this time. Because they've been popular, I can bring them back. It's not a problem. But obviously, I need to order the fabrics. So if you want one of these, whoop, if you want one of these bags. The pre-order is only open until Friday, okay? So that is all the bags. So it's quite serious at the end there, wasn't it? Um, that's all the bags. All the details, all the photos are on the Kofi shop, which is in the link below. If for any reason you can't get to that link or that link doesn't work, go just onto your search engine, Google, type in Kofi, Hannah's Happy Space. It will come up. Um yeah so that is it oh we're almost at an hour let's get quickly get away from you all you're probably sick to death of me um, right put my knitting back in my bag that sheep bag is going to mum um yeah so those are the bags that are all available if you are interested like I say Kofi is the place to go right I think that's everything um I'll stop waffling on at you I'll leave you alone, have some peace and quiet. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, there's all the normal things you can do, like the video, you might recommend it to other people. Um, comment, subscribe if you really liked it and you don't already subscribe. What am I? Put that down. Um, yeah, thank you ever so much. 
have enjoyed your time. Her, how I'll have learned to talk properly next time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your time with me. I have enjoyed my time with you. Thank you so much. And I am definitely going now. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.